What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and I am at the NVIDIA press day here in San Francisco. This is gonna be kind of a weird video because the timing of this. So some of the information I'm gonna tell you right now in this video, you might've already seen on their live stream, which is weird because it probably should be over by the time you see this, but I'm doing the video anyway. Okay, so GDC 2017 here. NVIDIA's camp's got a lot of the new stuff here with software and a little bit of uh, hardware we'll talk about as well. So Insight Visual Studio Edition 5.3, that's all about DX12 uh, VR application development, API debugging, uh, range profiling, not like the bad sense of profiling, the good sense of profiling, and then of course some more Oculus and Vive SDK stuff where they're getting much more involved in VR development. Uh, VR has been one of those things that's been kind of hit or miss depending on the developer's SDK tools, uh, how much help they've been getting from the manufacturers of the graphics cards to get better optimization for VR, so you can expect that to progress. Um, NVIDIA Aftermath, this is a good one too because they've come up with this new way for debugging when it comes to DX12. Uh, and to identify GPU class crashes versus CPU crashes. Part of the problem with DX12 is there's a bit of a disconnect between GPU and CPU and asynchronous compute. And sometimes when the game crashes or something goes weird or funky, it doesn't actually know what went wrong. So the idea here with NVIDIA Aftermath is NVIDIA users with their graphics cards would be able to automatically submit that data, that crash and debugging data to the developer so they could find exactly where the crash was and how it happened. Now, it sounds like things that have been around all along, uh, but the cool part is this is specifically with the DX12 API. So we can see some better optimization for DX12, which you guys know has been kind of hit or miss with how good it's been with some titles. Perfect example, Rise of the Tomb Raider hasn't been a great implementation of that. Another one here is NVIDIA has collaborated now with Amazon on their new Lumberyard uh, API, which is designed to be a AAA title feel uh, engine but more aimed at bringing you kind of a focus of uh, a film quality pixel, they're calling it, where they're trying to get closer to sort of a real life representation uh, in pixel format, what has to do with volumetric lighting and a lot of other stuff. I don't wanna to get too in, deep, in depth in that right now. It's a lot of really complicated information that I'm just too stupid to really re be able to regurgitate to today. Uh, but of course we have got the 1080 Ti. Now I can say this, all of the leaked specs have been wrong which is kind of cool because that means we actually were a little bit surprised on this. We've got all 3,585 or 84 CUDA cores going. It's not a shaved down Titan X Pascal. A 352-bit memory bus, which is really weird because it's got 11 gigabytes of G5X on there. So let the jokes going that it's really 12 gig, but one gig didn't work or something. I don't know, a la 3.5 all over again. No, not really, but that's a weird number. And they really just didn't explain too, well, too much why they went into 11 gigabytes of G5X. Maybe because 12 belongs to the Titan. Uh, but the coolest part about this is, and I don't have specific specs yet on availability and pricing. That's the part that you guys are probably already know by the time you've seen this, and I don't know yet at the time of making this, is what that's gonna be. But they did say they are doing away with the Founders Price Premium, which is usually $100 more for the 80 series, and they are going to launch the Founders Card alongside MSRP pricing. And then of course you can have all your AIC or add-in card partners bringing in their own boards and their own pricing. So the price will be a little bit more competitive uh, this time around. But they also are now gonna be launching for the 1080 and the 1060 an overclock SKU, which is kind of the first time they've ever done that in NVIDIA's history, having an overclock SKU, uh, where specifically they're talking about memory speeds. So they're gonna be launching a new GTX 1080 that has an overclock memory SKU with the 11 gigabit per second G5X memory that you're finding on the 1050 Ti, or excuse me, 1080 Ti, will be available on the 1080, and the 1060 will have a nine gigabit per second SKU uh, available as well to both founders and AIC for board partners. Now again, pricing guys, sorry I don't have that information. Don't shoot me, they wouldn't give it to us, but I wanted to bring you some of this information anyway. If you didn't see the live stream, don't worry, we'll be doing all the reviews you guys expect. All your favorite YouTubers will be doing reviews on this and uh, it's cold, so I'm gonna go. Thanks, Kyle, for holding the camera for me. Um, I don't know if the height thing was the problem, but all right. Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you watch Kyle, Paul's Hardware, Gamers Nexus, we're all here. We're all friends, we're gonna go get coffee now. See ya.